Class. So here we've got Banjo. Banjo's uh, eight, nine weeks old and he's not been here very long. But for me, I think the most important thing is to get the foundations right and get yourself a nice, well-balanced dog. So I don't think you can spoil a puppy. I think the more you do with them and the more exposure they get to sights and smells and noises and new environments, uh, the better. And we like to have the dogs knowing their name, knowing sit and knowing lie down and walking well on a lead. These are all really good basics. Banjo, Banjo, sit. So Banjo doesn't know anything at the moment, as you can see, um, but he knows I've got something that's quite tasty in my hand. So what I'll do is, in order to get him sit, I just push up, sit, good boy, and then give him the treat. And collies are so intelligent and they're not very long in learning. So go like this. <laughs> you get him in. Don't touch it, don't touch it. Oh, he's touching it. <laughs> Whereas the herding breeds are pretty unique in that they actually want to outpace the stock, get around on the other side and balance them back to us. We're very much a part of that picture. So this sheep sandwich <laughs> is a really important feature of a sheepdog and it's what we base all our training on. So we need to get this thing balanced correct right at the beginning and I'm just going to show you now how we go about it and how we use it to start the foundations of the training. This dog here he's called Banjo and he's got really good balance on one side, one flank and not so good on the other so he can perfectly demonstrate how little mistakes can start to creep in. Ready, Banjo? <laughs> Are you ready? Banjo is about a year old and he has got a lot of the basics. He's got a stop and walk on, but as you can see, I've still got him on a long line, which means that I can talk to you guys without him disappearing off and going self-employed. And obviously I've got my trusty pipe just to guide him around. So let's go and have a look, Banjo. Okay, so today we're going to look at putting your dog onto whistles. Now, I find putting a dog onto whistles one of the most rewarding training sessions because if your dog's already quite competent on their sides and stopping well and walking up well, they seem to just click onto it really, really quickly. It, <laughs> once your dog's on whistles, you feel really accomplished and it kind of takes you to that next level between a sort of farm dog and um, a really good farm dog getting on for a child dog. We tend to do this around the stage where your dog is quite confident at most tasks. So, uh, for example, Banjo here, he is running out okay. He's flanking both ways okay. He's taken off balance flanks, inside flanks. And it's this stage we put them on whistles. You can do it right from the get-go, but we find we don't want to overwhelm them with too much information at one time. So we find that getting them to this level and they already have a really good basis for learning stuff. So they just kind of absorb the whistles really readily. So today we're going to be looking at showing Banjo how to shed for the first time. Now for this, I do like a large number of sheep. So you can see all the sheep are in this field. They're well used to a dog and also it's a big space so that we can separate them really clearly and so there's not too much of a heavy draw. But the best way is just to show you. Lie down. So today we're going to be looking at shedding part two. Now, we originally started this with Banjo and of course Banjo went lame. So if you're going to be training sheep dogs at some point, you are going to have to deal with some sort of injury or lameness. So in Banjo's case, he actually fractured one of his nails and we waited for that to heal up and we gave him a couple of weeks and it did heal up and then we took him out the first time and it cracked all the way through. So as a result, he's had a few weeks off and in the end, we just took the whole the whole nail uh, out. I'll just show you. Banjo, Banjo, do you want to have a look? Want to show me a paw? That's his normal, normal toe. And there you can see where he's just 
uh, broken it a little bit higher up. But that should that should grow back fine. It shouldn't be a problem. In fact, actually, claw injuries, nail injuries, toe injuries are really, really common. And the biggest thing you can do for your dog is um, give them some Metacam, some Loxycom, and just keep them uh, at rest. And when you do take them out for the first time, make sure it's gentle exercise, you know, in a field rather than, uh, for example, in the pens or on concrete where they're going to be scraping about. So we're going to look at Banjo's shedding now. So we're going to be look, working on the Hebrideans. So they're slightly more difficult to part because they're much more united. And we're going to be working on smaller lots and shedding down to a smaller number. So at the beginning in our last lesson on shedding, you saw us working on big lots and shedding off big lots. And they're much easier to keep apart because they're already quite comfortable to be in a big flock. Whereas once you start shedding down to smaller numbers, they become a lot more difficult and the dog has to use a lot more of their natural ability and you'll find some dogs are better than others at this um, but we'll just show you what I mean with Banjo. Come on Banjo! So for some of you the Sheepdog School is about training a dog to be a useful worker and a farm dog but I know there will be some of you who have joined the school hoping to compete at Sheepdog Trials. So with that in mind we are going to be looking to progress Banjo right up through the stages and go to nursery trials. Nursery trials are run during the winter and they're for dogs under three years old. They typically have less dogs entered in them in compared to the open trials during the summer. So for example, your open trials might have anything from 40 dogs up to 80 or 90. The nursery trials, because there's a limited age gap, it is usually anywhere from a dozen dogs to maybe a maximum of 25 or 30. Sometimes more if you go further south. For some of you, your dog might be older than three now, but if you're new to trialing, you can enter the novice classes and that's a really really good way to get a foot in the door typically nursery trials are shorter than your opens they are ranged from about 200 yard outruns to maybe 300 will probably be the maximum and also I feel like the atmosphere at nursery trials is much much better for you starting to compete because it's a little bit less serious because young dogs can always just do something really random um, when they're learning and this happens to the best of handlers or people who are just starting out it's just it's just dogs they they sometimes can just surprise you with um, some really weird stunts so up till now we've always been working kind of in fields on mobs of sheep ranging from 10 20 30 upwards but now we're preparing for nursery trials we're gonna have to cut that number down nursery trials are typically held on four sheep occasionally three and up till now banjo really hasn't seen four sheep in a field because it's just not that normal is it so we're going to practice running on four sheep we're also going to practice having the sheep set out so normally when you take a young dog to the field, you just cast it around the, the sheep and normally the sheep will see the dog come in and they'll sort of gather themselves and run to a fence. So the dog's always used to picking up sheep that are running or at least on the move. Whereas often when you go to nursery trials, the, the four sheep will be stood quite still and often there's quite a heavy draw back to the area they've just come out of. Added to this complication, there's always the fact that there's a let out person or persons, there might be more than one, there might even be a let out dog. And your dog has to get used to scooping the sheep off the, off the let out person and bringing them back to you. And sometimes when people go to nursery trials for the first time, the dog will get really confused because the people are at the top and obviously the pens are at the top where the sheep have come out of. And if they're decent work dogs, quite often they think, oh, these four sheep have got out, we better just uh, <laughs> shove them back into these pens. So in order to prepare for that, at home here, we're going to shed out four sheep and we're going to get a helpful person, in this case Ewan, to hold the sheep up so the dog can get used to taking them off the let out person. And we'll start this at maybe 100, 150 yards and build it up to the, the 200, 300 yards until they're getting pretty confident. If you haven't got a let out person, it's really good if you can put some maybe some feed down for your sheep. Also, maybe you could put a post in and put a jacket on it or a wee scarecrow or just something to give the dog the impression that um, their sheep being held at a trial. But here, we're gonna try with Banjo and see how he reacts to just working on four sheep and taking them off a let out person. 
Okay, so last time we had Banjo out and we were gathering up uh, a smaller group of sheep and you could see one of the ewe lambs kept on breaking back and Banjo didn't seem to have the understanding or ability to be able to tuck her back in with the rest. As soon as she became a single, he just kept on kind of forgetting about her and, and working more on the packet. So it kind of showed a hole in his understanding, a hole in his training. So today we're going to look to try and start addressing that by teaching them to work a, a sheep by itself. Now, it's a, it's a valuable thing a sheep dog has to learn and there's varying degrees of ability. Some dogs are really good at working a single and some might find it more of a challenge. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put one, one sheep in this pen. The sheep is obviously familiar with this pen and we're gonna put our mates on the other side of the fence so there's a bit of a draw because there's not actually much point in teaching a dog to wear a single unless the single is wanting to go somewhere so they're actually learning to stop and turn them and um, bring them to you. But the best way is for me to go and show you so we'll just go and make a start. Banjo, lie down. So look at the dog in. Hi, you get that? So you can see when he comes in the field he's automatically scanning for sheep but you can see actually what he's done is he's spotted these sheep that are um, in this little paddock here and um, he's fairly locked onto them um, so it's really hard to make a young dog look somewhere else when they've got an idea where the sheep is but it's really good practice um, because stuff like this often happens in a work situation and in a trial situation. So what I'll do is lie down, lie down, lie down. Banjo, that'll do, that'll do. Heel, heel. Boy. Lie down, lie down, lie down, lie down, lie down. Come by. So there you could see I just left him lying down or standing a little way back and started to move towards the sheep myself. So you could get an indication as to where the sheep are. And if you always do that, it always means that the dog has an idea that the sheep are um, in a straight line from you. Okay, so we're back in the training field with Banjo, who you've seen lots of and who is nearly fully trained. And today we're going to be looking at the turn back or the look back. It's the same thing. So what I'm going to be doing with Banjo is we're going to gather up the sheep. They're in a big mob of over 100 here and we're just going to split them in half, let them work one half and then I'll walk, stop him, walk through the sheep and try and direct his attention towards the other batch and say, look back and he should turn around and then I'll give him a flank to go around them. So this is the basic terms and for most dogs that's, that's all you'll probably ever need um, but there is a more advanced stage uh, that we'll look at later on. But for now let's just go and give it a whirl. Morning. This is Ban uh, Emma Gray and Banjo. Banjo. Banjo that'll do. Banjo that'll do. Banjo, look, Banjo, lie down, no, look there, sit this, Banjo, look, lie down, boy, lie down, lie down, lie down, lie down, come by.
Dirty. Find your. Lie down. Lad, come by. Steady, lie down. Pancho, lie down. Come by, steady, lie down. We, lie down. Good lad, lie down, lie down. We, lie down. Good lad, we, lie down. Good lad, we, lie down. We, lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down, come by, come by. Lie down, lie down. Come by, lie down, lie down. Lie down, come by. Hey, lie down, lie down, lie down. Lie down, lie down, come by, lie down. Come by, lie down, lie down, Banjo, that'll do, lie down, Banjo, lie down, come by. There, good boy, come by, lie down, wait, 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 good lad, lie down, good boy, lie down, come by. Lie down, wait, steady. Steady, steady.